What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. We have a very informative video for you guys today. I am so excited. Before we get into today's video, make sure you guys do me a favor, head down below, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for all of the amazing content that we have planned coming up as well as reviving Tokyo Drift Evo. It's gonna be amazing. Before we get into all of the informative good stuff, I actually have some bad news about the Evo. If you guys haven't watched the last couple of episodes, definitely go do that. I'll link them down in the description for you guys. We actually disassembled the entire car looking for some damages and we found some pretty big ones. So as you guys know, in the last video, we actually pulled the fuel tank out of the Evo. As you guys can see, there's just a hole going straight down. We took out the fuel tank, it was completely rusted out and destroyed. Well, we went ahead and let it air dry outside overnight. And we were gonna do some research on how to actually save the OEM fuel tank so that we could clean it up, show you guys how we clean it up and just install it right back into the Evo. Well, overnight, somebody actually came to the shop and stole our fuel tank. So. I guess it's partially our fault for leaving it outside. We left it by one of my cars that we keep parked outside to let it air out because we obviously can't do that in the shop because we just smell absolutely terrible and the neighbors would get mad and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, they came overnight and they actually stole our fuel tank. So we no longer have the OEM fuel tank from the Evo, which is really, really sad and unfortunate. And I hate that people out there like that that would just come steal someone else's property. But the good news that came out of that is we actually got in touch with Radium and we are gonna be doing a D entire fuel system from all the lines, fuel cell, fuel pump, assembly, everything is getting redone. So, I mean, that's gonna be really amazing. We have everything already set up back here. We have the fuel cell frame that's gonna be going in the back. We're gonna cut it. It's just, it's gonna be amazing. We're gonna give this thing an entire new fuel system, which I think it needs anyway. This thing is a full race car and it should have a fuel cell because we're gonna be racing in a little bit. But yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on the Evo. It might be a few days until we're actually able to do anything because um, obviously we have to wait for the parts to be made and for them to be shipped to us. So during this little limbo, period where we're waiting for parts for the Evo, I thought I'd go ahead and address everything that has to do with this Evo. You guys have had a lot of questions over the past few videos, so I thought I'd go ahead and I'm going to answer all of the questions today. All right, guys, so this might be a long one. I have tons of notes here because I don't want to forget anything. You guys had a lot of questions in the last video, so I'm going to go ahead and try to answer as many as I possibly can. So sit back, relax, and enjoy today's video. We're just going to dive right into it. So I think firstly and most importantly, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the story of this exact car. There's a lot of confusion out there with how many cars there were and how many cars were in the movie and rear wheel drive, all that stuff. I'm gonna take care of all those questions for you guys as best as I can today. Um, obviously, I was not there when the movie was filmed. I was like 10 years old or something. So this is all from what I have heard and from what APR has told me. So if you're out there and you know more or um, I said something incorrectly, feel free to correct me in the comments. This is just what I know from what I've been told. So I guess let's just jump right into it and go over the complete story of the Evo. In the beginning, before there was actually Tokyo Drift, uh, Universal had reached out to three different companies that had three separate cars. I don't know if they were all Evos or if there were three separate cars, but I just know that Universal reached out to three different companies, APR being one of those companies. I believe that they flew out to each different shop to go check out the cars, and this is one of the cars that they were checking out. At the time, Evo was a brand new car. I believe this was 2004, so this is uh, this is right when the Evo came to America, and it was the, the big thing back then. APR developed the wide body for the car, as you guys can see, and it was also in the movie. Um, I believe the wide body adds around 40 millimeters to the entire body of the car, and it's molded. Just looks really, really nice. At the end of Universal checking out all three of the cars, Universal actually picked the APR Evo, which is really, really awesome, because that's what created the Tokyo Drift Evo. This is patient zero for the Tokyo Drift Evo. Without this car right here, there would be no Tokyo Drift Evo, which is actually pretty mind blowing. Courtesy of APR, I actually have some pictures from the filming of the movie, as well as the car on the tour and everything that I'm about to go over. So throughout the entirety of the video, I'm gonna go ahead and throw images that I was able to get um, from APR through the entire process. Now that Universal actually picked the APR Evo, they began to start creating the movie cars. Now, I don't know too much about the movie cars. I do know this much. There was 10 actual movie cars, 10 total cars that were in the movie. When they're filming movies and they crash the car and stuff like that, they don't go back and fix that car. 
they just use a completely different car. So Universal had a total of 10 Tokyo Drift Evos. Through the movie, I'm not completely sure on this is what I was told from APR. There are only two right-hand drive Evos and only two of them were rear-wheel drive. Now, I have also heard that there could have been more. I know RMR built those cars. So if you guys are able to get in touch with RMR or they're watching the video, I don't know. And they can actually tell us how many Evos were built that were rear-wheel drive. That would be awesome. But from my knowledge, there's only two that were actually right-hand drive and there was only two that were rear-wheel drive. Could be totally wrong on that. They could have all been in right-hand drive. I don't know, but I do know they got the 10 cars from Mitsubishi themselves. Mitsubishi was kind enough to donate these cars to Universal. And uh, from what I was told from APR, during Hurricane Katrina around 2005, there was a Mitsubishi dealership in Louisiana that was flooded out due to the hurricane. All these cars couldn't be sold, so Mitsubishi donated them over to Universal. Um, that's actually pretty cool because during the time I was in Mississippi and then I was in Katrina as well. So that's really crazy. At the end of filming with all these 10 cars, the deal was that Universal had to crush these cars due to liability issues from Mitsubishi. So currently there is no other Tokyo Drift Evos that are alive right now. All cars have been crushed and this is the last and final remaining Tokyo Drift Evo. Patient Zero, the car that inspired the entirety of all 10 movie cars. So that's absolutely insane. And that's like one of the coolest things to me that this is the car that started it all. Like I said earlier, without this car right here, there is no Tokyo Drift Evo, which is pretty insane. Also, something I forgot to mention, I do have actual documentation, the original document of Universal contacting APR about the livery and the design on the car. I know a lot of you guys had questions about why is the livery different? Why is there different sponsors? Blah, blah, blah. Well, during the movie, Universal actually contacted APR to get licensed to use the ride body on all 10 of the cars and to use their logo on all 10 of the cars and also to alter their livery on the car. So if you guys notice the side of this car, the APR logo is massive. In the actual movie, Universal decided to shrink the APR logo and creating a kind of a different look for the side of the car. And also there are many different sponsors on the car. And that's because a lot of the sponsors that sponsored the movie cars were different than the sponsors that APR had on the car. There's actually a legal document listing all of those things that they wanted to change as well as uh, licensing the body kit and the red and all of that good stuff. Now, another cool thing about the design is they didn't stray too far from the original APR Evo. There's subtle differences like the livery, I said, the wheels, uh, the front of the car, because the car in the movie was an Evo 9. APR actually still has the Evo 9 front bumper that I need to go get, but when I actually bought the car, it was up in storage and we couldn't take it that day, but that's minor details. When you go inside of the car, it's really cool. You can actually see the gauge cluster that they use is the same one that's in the interior of our Evo. You guys look at the cage that's in the movie versus the cage that's in this Evo. It's the same and they even have like the red foam for the helmet up top. Really, really cool subtle differences that they decided to keep in the movie from this car. Now that we've actually talked about the cars from the movie, let's go ahead and talk about this car. So this car was not actually used in the movie itself. They used this car after the movie because all of the other Tokyo Drift cars that were in the movie, all 10 of them have been crushed. They used this car for the actual Tokyo Drift premiere, which is really awesome. And I think one of the biggest reasons that this car doesn't run anymore is because it went on a massive world tour. I believe it was like three years long where it traveled to Mexico City, traveled to Thailand, uh, Taiwan, um, I believe also the UK, if I'm not mistaken. This car has been all over the world, which is really cool. And when it came back, the car just never ran again and never, um, I believe they had some issues starting it and then just, just never ran again. So this car was used for the actual premiere of Tokyo Drift and the actual DVD release, which is what the world tour was for. So that's pretty much the entire story of the Tokyo Drift Evo. So like I keep saying, this is, this is the only one left. There is no other Tokyo Drift Evo left. Without this car behind me, there is no Tokyo Drift Evo. And that's just one of the coolest parts about this car for me and you know, bringing this thing back to life. Now, another massive question that you guys had was, is this car rear wheel drive? Unfortunately, this car is not rear wheel drive. This thing is an absolute track monster. If you guys search on YouTube, there's tons of videos uh, of this car being driven on track. This thing is actually insane. It's still all wheel drive, but we are looking into actually making this car rear wheel drive. There's a couple of different options that we have and we're looking at what is the best and most reliable way to actually convert this car to rear wheel drive. Most of all, is that something that you guys would be interested in seeing us turn the Tokyo Drift Evo into rear wheel drive? Or what do you think? Should we keep it all wheel drive? Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about that. 
uh, but this car currently is all wheel drive. So that is pretty much everything that I know about the Tokyo Drift Evo. Now, like I said in the beginning, take all of this with a grain of salt. I was not there when the car was built. I was not there when they chose the APR Evo. So um, this is just what I have heard from the people around me. And I know there's a lot more knowledgeable people out there like Sean Morris from Top Rank who actually built the RB26 Mustang or Craig Lieberman who is the Fast and Furious guy that can probably answer a lot of these questions better than me, but this is just what I have heard, and this is my experience from you know buying the car. Uh, I'm not saying that I'm absolutely right and that somebody's wrong, it could be completely opposite. This is just what I know about the car, and I'm stoked either way. I cannot wait to bring this thing back to life. Like I said, when I bought this car, this is my hero, my dream car right here. Um, so we're gonna bring it back to life and we're gonna have fun with it no matter what. So I hope this answers a lot of the questions that you guys had about the car. Um, if you guys have any more questions, of course, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. If you guys wanna know anything throughout the process, I'm learning just like you guys are. So if we find anything else out, I'll be able to tell you guys. But for right now, we're just having fun reviving this bad boy. All right, guys, we have made it home and this is going to be the end of the video. Also, a lot of you guys have been asking about my collection recently and if I've added anything new. I have so much new stuff in my collection. I think I should do a little collection update. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below if you guys are interested in me going over my entire studio collection. It's looking really, really good. We are about to paint our entire house in about a week and a half or so, so I'm very excited about that. Finally, my red wall is coming to life. Maybe a little black accents as well. Also, we got some new Godzilla stuff uh, in light of Godzilla vs. Kong releasing today, actually. When you guys are watching this, Godzilla vs. Kong goes live today, and I may have a special announcement that goes live today about that too, so check Instagram. But yeah, tons of new Godzilla stuff. I'm loving it. Tons of new Pokemon stuff, Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. It's great. It's growing. So let me know if you guys are interested, and I can do like a full little thing of going through my entire collection. But hopefully I answered all of your questions about the Tokyo Drift Evo. Like I said, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you haven't already, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out, guys. And uh, yeah, hopefully all of the radium and the DW fuel stuff comes in soon so we can get this thing going and hopefully get this thing started. So stay tuned for that. But I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.